Get off the stage and never sing again! You are the worst! Hey! You do not get to call Britta the worst. <laughs> the Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life, it's episode 357. Uh, we're in the middle of December of 2023, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. It's a big Ring of Honor pay-per-view coming up this Friday. Huge. Or everyone's super excited about that. Everyone's talking about it, and everyone knows what's on the card. Our friend Phil <laughs> has uh, set the turn the wrestling world upside down. Uh-huh. A uh, a banner episode of AEW Dynamite this week can only be described as a wonderful variety show. <laughs> So much to discuss. I guess the WWE stuff's the the big thing so far. So Warner Brothers Discovery is back negotiating with WWE. They had they took a meeting this week, and uh, the word is that CM Punk peaked the has peaked the interest of WBD executives. And uh, where what, where do you think a report that suggests that Phil Brooks is a the most important piece of what could be like the defining moment of two companies existence on cable television for the f- past five years. Whose camp do you think that that little nugget came out of? Do you think, you know, if if the nugget hadn't also included that they met Monday, mm-hmm. I would be. Uh, yeah, it'd be like, well, clearly this is Phil. <laughs> I, I believe they took a meeting. I believe that's real. Sure. Uh, I would be interested in how much the rest of that claim is. <laughs> uh, but hey, I mean, obviously they wanted him for that collision show. And who knows if that show would have gotten greenlit if he wasn't part of the package to the point where they had to scramble to scrub him from it. Um, when uh, when the the one of the meltdowns happened. Uh, yeah, this is it's good news for Phil and it's good news for WWE because even if you don't go back or even if you don't get on WBD stations, it's another name to throw out of, hey, these guys are interested when you're when you're trying to get more money out of NBC or Disney or Amazon or whoever. Like it's a, it's another name in the pot that would theoretically drive up the price whether or not they would actually end up there or not so it's great news for our our good friend nick khan <laughs> that's right he's uh there's a very robust market that he's exploring mm-hmm. as far as uh tv rights and Open for business i hear yes that is accurate so things had already gone far enough down the path with another suitor uh, the week that uh, Punk was the first week that Punk was back on Raw, that Triple H was not, and Triple H and Nick Khan had taken a meeting with uh, with uh, with someone else, and uh, I had just assumed that that was uh, Amazon. I I don't know that it's either Amazon or uh, the FX people. I'm assuming sure. because those are the two names that we heard. Uh, Paul, of, I, Paul Levesque Paul was seen sitting with Jeffrey Bezos at the Maxine. Maxine Dupree's big fashion show a couple months ago. So I think no. about that almost every day. <laughs> <laughs> Paul was there, wasn't wearing a wedding ring, interestingly, probably a coincidence. Sometimes, many times a day, I think about that. Uh huh. But, uh, you know, he and Jeff are, they know each other, one would think then. And yeah, uh, I'm, Prime has been, I feel, I feel like it's, it's like not an if, when, but a when. Like, if it's not this time around, it's in five years, right? Like, eventually, the World Wrestling Federation and the wonderful Amazon Corporation will join forces one day. Themes? They'll they'll be on streaming somewhere at some point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, and I guess we'll see how it goes. 
But uh, yeah, CM Punk apparently has opened a shut door, is the quote, with uh, WBD negotiating with WWE again. And the obvious there, there's this is multi pronged because it is believed that WBD has some minority ownership stake in AEW, uh huh, something that AEW has never. Uh, confirmed or denied publicly. Uh, Tony Khan just says, well, I make all the decisions. That uh, doesn't answer the question. But certainly, um, and the uh, the parallel here is that TKO owns UFC. UFC is on ESPN. ESPN has other MMA groups on ESPN. Mm-hmm. And that uh, maybe in this era of WWE that is not the Vince McMahon era anymore, exclusivity is not something that is important to the company. Just making as much money as possible is the is the goal. Sure. And so that that might set up a circumstance where TNT, TBS, True TV, whatever the case may be, has both AEW and WWE programming on. Also, AEW is up for a renewal. <laughs> right. Yeah, there's it's it's less impossible than it seemed even six months ago <laughs> that there could be two different companies. I mean, I guess there was a brief period where Spike had WWE and TNA. So it's not impossible. I think I'd forgotten about that. Did they have was this? I don't. I don't remember that. I'm pretty sure that they, I feel like they start airing commercials for TNA during the last few. I think it was when it was like on in like late Saturday nights or something. This is prior to it being on Thursdays, but I'm pretty sure. I like think that was, of... Fox, I still think that was in the Fox sports net days or whatever. Okay. The case Maybe was... I, I apologize. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know that you're wrong. It just sounds wrong to me, <laughs> but I don't know. It was 20 years ago. <laughs> Who could remember? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't seem it doesn't like none of none of what we've just talked about seems impossible. It, WWE could end up there and AEW could need to find a new suitor. Uh they could both end up on there, or again, WWE also again, just getting the meeting seems like it's good. There's no downside for WWE, especially to meet with them, even if they don't end up going there because it's just another name to throw out when you're trying to get, you know, an extra $50 million out of Bezos or whoever, like you're, (laughs) I don't think Jeff Bezos actually negotiates television deals for prime if I had to guess, but um, uh, yeah, like, so it's, it's, it's great news for the world wrestling federation. So that's clearly the number one story here because Mm -hmm. Uh, WWE is in a uh, holding pattern until Royal Rumble time. We know CM Punk's going to be in the Royal Rumble. We know Cody Rhodes is going to be in the Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. We know that Cody Rhodes uh, and Roman Reigns is likely the direction immediately. And Seth Rollins and CM Punk is likely the direction immediately. We're assuming those are WrestleMania matches. Mm-hmm. I had heard that Seth and Punk was going to be a Rumble match, but Punk declared for the Rumble, so I heard incorrectly. Mm-hmm. Um, or plans changed. You mm-hmm. could always just say plans changed. <laughs> uh, Drew McIntyre will be challenging for Seth Rollins' world title on the uh, New Year's Day Raw, the Day One Raw. Nick, Nick Khan, be, Nick Khan lo- loves that Day One. <laughs> Like they remember they did the 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 pay per view on January first. I'm surprised yeah. they didn't. They I'm surprised they haven't tried to bring that back. I don't know if that one just like wasn't viable or if it's hard to find a it date. It wasn't viable. It wasn't viable. But like they hey, decided it wasn't viable. Mm-hmm. One one of Nick's few uh, mistakes or stumbles along the way of becoming Vince's one and only son was uh, yeah, he's not afraid to throw a, a lot of ideas at you. Mm-hmm. And his and his idea to try to like make more stadium shows. Like they got SummerSlam to be a stadium show, so he was successful there. But then they they tried for like Money in the Bank and one or two others, and it's like ah, oh, we didn't quite bite on that. But give it a couple well, of years. 
Oh, Rumble's in the stadium. Yeah. And Elimination Chamber's in the stadium. <laughs> and Mania's in the stadium. And look, all right. I'm not saying that it's uh, it doesn't deserve to be recognized, but uh, who 15, 16 years ago, I was playing uh, the Total Extreme Wrestling computer game series, and I started putting all my pay-per-views in stadiums because it made more sense to uh, put 35,000 people in a stadium and make it m- cover the cost versus putting 15,000 people in an arena. Like, this is not brain surgery it's just Vince McMahon didn't do a lot of things that made sense because he was stuck in his ways well and it's, it's, he did it's, a very bad job at his job apparently <laughs> and it's the optics for Vince right he of a, a sold out 12,000 seat arena looks better to him than a than a a 50,000 seat football stadium that has 30 35,000 in it like that doesn't look as good because you'll see the empty you'll see some empty chairs in certain camera angles I I guess but like put the garbage bags over the seats and paint them (laughs) what they've been doing at Washington Commanders games for 20 years (laughs) (laughs) make it part of the the part of the aesthetic anyway I don't know what we're even talking about now (laughs) but uh, yeah so uh, some Royal Rumble seeds planted uh i guess the biggest and most important and most fun thing on wwe tv this week was the cm punk and seth rollins uh the tete a tete on raw what did you think of that that was probably seth's best promo since like 2015 <laughs> um wow i thought it was very very good that, that's that more speaks to how low, low i slowly i think of him as a promo and <laughs> Praising. No, I was good. It was good. I liked it. I, I just I just like to throw in little digs at <laughs> at a guy like Seth. Um, at a sweaty gym sock. That's right. Um, but uh but yeah, I thought it was I thought it was a good promo. I think how they are asking fans right now to kind of choose a side. They're not making anybody a straight heel, but you have men like Seth Seth. Uh, another another uh thing that wouldn't be allowed in a Vince era. He said he hates CM Punk. That's right. That uh, word was verboten. That's right. So uh but it's a we have been uh it's we don't get a lot of wrestling in any company that's just two guys that hate each other anymore <laughs> and want to beat each other's ass. Um and uh it could it could still be pretty effect uh effective. I think maybe even more so when you don't see it a lot. So uh, I thought Seth was was very believable in his verbiage. Obviously, there's some similarities to what he said and what other people said about Punk. Obviously, this one was agreed upon. Is the is the difference here? But uh, yeah, it's it feels like a hot match. It feels like something people want to see, and uh, it's it's Seth. It's the makings of a great uh, WrestleMania Night One main event. It's. It's a nice dig. That's 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 more of a dig at Seth, to be fair. I just like come on. <laughs> we know what we know when Roman's match is going on. Sure. It's it's not on Saturday. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it it feels exciting. It feels like the the show feels fresher with him with him there. I, they did like a, a little song and dance over a couple of shows of where is he going to sign? You know, it's all important what brand these guys are on, even though everybody just goes to whatever show they want anyway. Right. Um, but they, they made a big deal of having Orton sign with SmackDown and you got punk on raw. So each show gets a new guy, uh, new being a relative term, but a guy that hasn't, <laughs> a guy that hasn't been around on WWE programming in a while. Um, and to kind of bolster them and you'll, you get a few weeks of just, Hey, isn't this novel to see them here? And then while they, as you said, take a, a while well, creative takes a vacation for the rest of the month of December. And then, you know, you can hit the ground running in, in January, trying to actually get the, uh, get people excited for the rumble a little bit more, but yeah, I thought the, you know, the show, the show has a little bit more life to it because it feels like there's more stars on it right now. So um, it's less, not every week is Cody Rhodes and Sami Zayn versus the judgment day uh some combination of you know like four baby faces against the judgment day every week 
Uh, so that feels nice. That feels that feels nice and fresh. So, um, yeah, I think uh, they've set themselves up. I don't think you're going to see anything earth shattering over the next few weeks, but I think Drew's Drew's been pretty good the last couple of weeks. What a what a strange. I'm praising Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins on this show. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think they're they're setting up for that. It's all been good. They're making trying to make Drew. He's in. He's finally gotten to his heel Diesel face. He's he's finally gotten to early '96 Nash, and uh, he's gonna he's gonna milk that for a while. And I'm gonna just guess that he also is gonna wrestle Seth for the title at the Rumble because who else is there <laughs> if they're not doing the Punk match until Mania? So yeah, I think they they've got some some stuff going for them, and uh, uh, the the women's division is also uh, a part of WWE programming currently. I'm told. Sure, I guess. Uh, Charlotte appeared to hurt herself on uh, SmackDown last week. Last we heard, she was getting x-rays. Um, I don't think if it was a ligament, that's usually something you get an MRI for, not not an x-ray. Uh, or maybe maybe the message got lost in translation. <laughs> Possible. <laughs> uh, but uh, she got hurt in a match uh, against uh, Bailey on a uh, no, against Asuka on SmackDown last week, where Bailey interfered. Um, so yeah, I don't even know what the uh, what the uh, what the what the title picture looks like right now and, uh, in the SmackDown Women's Division, and that's kind of up for grabs because of uh, the Charlotte injury. Mm-hmm. Uh, the house show lineups for the holiday tour; mm-hmm. uh, these are instructive sometimes. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Uh, Cody Nakamura bull rope match at Madison Square Garden. Punk will be wrestling uh, Dominic Mysterio at uh, the Crypto.com Arena in Los Angeles and at uh, Madison Square Garden. So uh, I got a breathless email from the arena here in Baltimore saying Randy Orton is going to be at the house show Christmas week. <laughs> He, they then list the card, and he's not on the card, but they're like, he will be there. Don't worry. So uh, Randy's making towns again. <laughs> Day after Christmas sucks to be him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, that's what's happening there. Uh, I was positive. Yeah. I was positively giddy watching or watching that Rollins punk segment on Raw. It was wonderful. It was also like it's the first time we've gotten a few you know only a couple instances of punk being on on television since he's been back but he's just been he's just been nice guy america's best friend phil yes which is uh inarguably in my opinion the least interesting that phil can be yes is the first few weeks when he gets back to a promotion <laughs> or starts with a new promotion when he's uh when he's all smiling and kissing babies and everything it's, it's yes it's just not that interesting, but when you give him somebody to uh, somebody, just put him in front of another guy, and the other guy is ranting and raving about how he hates him, and Punk's got that smirk on his face. You're like, oh, okay, this is this is what he's good at. He's he can still he can still uh, he can still do this. And uh, yeah, you remember why he's <laughs> why he's been on. You know, a top guy and been on somebody's television show when, you know, with the exception of the six years he, was <laughs> he, he quit and went home. Uh, he uh, that's why he's always on top and always will have a job. Somebody will pay him. <laughs> the list is getting smaller of who will pay him. But, the, you know, somebody will always will take a chance. That's why guys like Punk will always get another chance because there's money to be made. There's T-shirts to sell. There's ratings to pop and there's uh, network executives to impress. So that's why that's why a guy like Punk gets uh, gets a lot of chances. And so, like I said, that that first promo where he actually had something to do was very good. So we're off to a good start. Uh, AJ Styles been hearing for a month. He'll be back on TV soon. Mm -hmm. Still hearing he'll be back on TV soon. (laughs) I, I like I we talked I think we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. Uh like just just hold him off for the rumble at this point, right? Like what is 
what do you like what do you what are you gonna have him do on on tv for two weeks while he's uh you know in the lead up you might as well just hold him off for for the rumble i would think but hey uh he's he'll he'll be he'll be back i did want to mention you mentioned the charlotte injury it's like hopefully it's nothing serious but if it is i've just assumed for like the past year that it's the two women's title matches are becky and Rhea and charlotte and bianca because those are like the only marquee matches they have that they haven't done before sure uh and it's like so if charlotte ends up out for any length of time what are they gonna do (laughs) Because Bianca's wrestled everybody in damage control like 15 times already. True. So I don't uh, I don't I don't know. I mean you could always do like a like a three way or a four way or something, but it's like what do you what do you what do you do if you don't get to what feels like the the obvious match to make? What I would do is uh I would have uh Becky and Rhea be the uh Becky and Rhea needs to be the um, Raw Women's Title Match, and then the SmackDown. One. I know they're not called that anymore, but and then the SmackDown Women's Title Match. I would uh, go ahead and and uh, let's call up uh, Roxanne Perez and have her win the Rumble, and uh, let's just let's just get her uh, let's get her up and going. You can you can you can bring someone up and have them win the Rumble, and it can be your number four. Uh, singles title match, like that's fine. I got, I got no problem with that. And Roxanne Perez was has been ready for the main roster since she stepped foot in NXT. So, yeah, no, that's they could, they could, they do always have that option of making a new star. They don't do it very <laughs> often, but they do have that option. Yeah, I would simply make a new star, <laughs> or at least try. You know, maybe just try. <laughs> Right, maybe it doesn't take, right. and you ruin her career. <laughs> you that could would suck. Knockouts tag team champion Roxanne Perez, but Ugh. just kidding. That's that's no. a thing to say. <laughs> I, I don't think they. I don't think they could screw her up. <laughs> like it, that's how much of a slam dunk she is. Current regime, I have more faith in. I would say, but I and look. Paul Paul has uh he has you know Seth's been champion for a while. He's booked a babyface world champion to hold the belt for more than a month. So he's shown growth as a booker over his NXT uh run. He did have Finn. Finn was the champion for a long time. But uh uh yeah, I don't know. I I I would sure like to see a, a new person make it as well, but I I just I've just assumed like I said for the longest time because they haven't done that match. Uh, at least not they may have done it when like Bianca was still in NXT remember that wonderful time when Charlotte won the NXT title and then didn't job to anyone when she lost it yes uh they may have had a match somewhere in there but uh they haven't had a match since Bianca has been like the top right. mega star of the company for them so or for right. all the women's side so that just seemed like the, such the obvious slam dunk with Either Becky or uh, or Charlotte winning the Rumble. Has Charlotte won a Rumble yet? I uh, believe so. Yes. Okay. Well, let's just give her another one. It's fine. I mean, what she's, are the odds that she hasn't? Right. She's. I mean, she is the greatest uh, WWE women's wrestler of all time uh, by their own by their own narrative. So you know, give her a couple. She's got to win a couple Rumbles. So either her or Becky wins the Rumble, and then the other one can win an Elimination Chamber or whatever, and that's your. That's your mania card, unless she's hurt, in which case you got to figure something out. So your women women's Royal Rumble winners are uh, Asuka, Becky Lynch, okay, Charlotte Flair, okay, Bianca oh, she, Belair. Oh, Charlotte won the Rumble to challenge for the NXT belt. That's why I don't remember her winning. It was a pandemic year. I mean, who, who could possibly care? Sure, sure. Bianca won the next year in twenty one. Ronda Rousey won it in 22. <laughs> Rhea Ripley won it in 23. Okay. There you go. <laughs> it's... 
All right. Uh, NXT had a pay-per-view this past weekend, and uh, our friend Phil showed up there also mm-hmm. wearing a Bret Hart hoodie for a segment with Shawn Michaels where they both appeared to have CT. <laughs> I, I made the joke, uh, at least privately, it was uh, that I thought they had both done the Goldberg thing where they had butted a locker before going out. Yeah, because they got lost very quickly and they just could not get it back together. And then they just started playing punk's music. <laughs> like, Yes, it was. It's kind of <laughs> yes. it's funny. But then you also go, oh, no, Gram- grandpa's sundowning <laughs> <laughs> uh, more so for Sean than punk. But uh, yeah, it was it was an awkward segment. But uh, apparently that's is that is that public scuttlebutt. We could cut this if not I, that, that I think it is. That's yeah, I think Phil, it is. Phil is uh Phil is maybe interested in taking over the reins of 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 uh of the NXT performance center when uh when either Sean's done or he's done. I don't know who's gonna <laughs> if Sean wants is tired of uh living in Florida and uh teaching hip toss class, then then Phil wants to slide in there. Yeah, one of the very very many uh media types that uh, cm punk leaks things to mm-hmm. was talking on on social media this week about how his long-term goal is to be the new sean michaels in nxt whenever sean decides he doesn't want to be the sean michaels of nxt anymore mm-hmm. and which would mean that uh punk would be isn't this fascinating william regal <laughs> Or something in the meantime. I think it's an eye on a post in ring career for Mr. Punk, yeah. who uh lives uh an extravagant lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Maybe he doesn't spend big on a lot of things, but he has multiple homes in expensive places. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah. so he has an eye on the future. You ever think mm-hmm. about uh that that promo in AEW last year where uh, when uh, which we now know Punk was not happy about his his build up with Moxley, where Moxley yeah. in the middle of his promo just goes, "We all know you only came back because you ran out of money anyway," and then Punk yes. and then Punk never, didn't address it and just kind of moved on. Yes, I, th- I think about that one a lot. <laughs> I was thinking about that one this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's fine, you know. If- yeah. Spend you spend it, you can make more later if you're a star of the caliber of CM Punk. So n- nothing ventured, nothing gained. But I just think about that a lot. I think about that line being said. <laughs> yeah. Very off the cuff in that moment. And then knowing that these guys were like very very crossed with each other at the time. It's like, oh, that's fun. That's a fun little that's a fun little nugget. Yes, it certainly is. So this uh excuse me, this NXT deadline show. Uh, they have the uh, their King of the Mountain, the uh, Iron Survivor Challenge. Every time someone has to say Iron Survivor Challenge in a promo, <laughs> an angel loses their wings. <laughs> it's terrible. It's such a wordy thing. And like the matches are fun. Like even like I don't even know how to how to explain how to enjoy them because um, they're just kind of goofy fun (laughs) like there's a clock there's a penalty box there's a scoreboard on the screen the whole time it's like it's different than everything wwe usually does so i kind of like it sure also it it is just goofy (laughs) it's a little bit those scramble matches they tried like a decade ago and a little bit the jeff jarrett king of the mountain match correct but without the reverse ladder match part yes yeah, like it's it's it is, and hey, Borash, it's big big guy in NXT, small, yeah. but yeah. uh, but yeah, like it's it's. I understand that though. It is fun when WWE does something very un WWE. It is gen. It can be a lot of fun just for the novelty of it. Yeah. So, uh, Dragon Lee won the North American title from Dirty Dom on that show, and uh, Cora Jade came back after uh, a mystery like five month absence uh which i just always assume is plastic surgery of some kind although she was just coming off a plastic surgery uh uh, absence so i'm not sure if something went wrong or she just was taking more time off anyway uh i didn't hear anything you just said i was too busy respecting her (laughs) by the way how many photos 
uh, is CM Punk in a post <laughs> <laughs> with women that aren't his wife on social media this week? Especially the two that look exactly like his wife. We've got to be into the dozens now, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot. He did finally post like him and Norman Smiley and yes. him and him and uh, uh, you know, great, great guy, Terry Taylor. Oh, um, oh, I didn't see that one. I got to see Terry Taylor. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he so he did finally he because he I don't know if anyone's aware of this, but uh, Phil Phil reads the tweets. <laughs> feels, feels very much aware of what people in uh, a certain segment of wrestling Twitter say about him. And so today, all of a sudden, a bunch of photos of him with with men started rolling out. <laughs> oh, it's delicious, isn't it? Yep. I hope he's having a wonderful time. Also worth noting, uh, his uh, his ring finger on his left fan hand is not visible in any of the pictures with those women. Oh, if you man. just want to, <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Probably some people don't wear their rings when they're working out. Yeah, absolutely. There's a million reasons. One He's of been... the reasons <laughs> it's... could be, could be more interesting than the other ones. <laughs> One of those reasons would be adultery. <laughs> <laughs> could be what could, would and could be if that were happening, which I'm sure it isn't because if there's one thing we know about Phil, he's a good guy and, uh, you know, he would never leave his current uh, significant oh. other for a younger woman who was a fan of that current significant other oh. in, in her younger life. Oh, that... <laughs> this is getting really close to, <laughs> to, Look, to all slander. Right. I got to back off. this. No, I think it's fine. This is all public. I know. There's a video of CM Punk meeting young Cora Jade. Uh huh. Going around on social media. And much as there was a video of a young AJ Lee meeting Lita going around on social media years ago, WWE has used it time and again in video packages. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they'll do the same with the CM Punk Cora Jade video, should anything develop there. Mm -hmm. And I'll, and look, I don't wish will uh, ill will to AJ Lee or Mr. Pug or anyone. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> karma exists. <laughs> that's all. That's all you need to say, really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's. It would not. It would not be the first time in professional wrestling <laughs> that a guy was on the road while his wife was not on the road with him. Yeah. Then some things in their personal lives changed. Sure. Would not, anyway. be the first time. <laughs> would, not, would not be the first time. Spent a lot of time talking about. You know what? I just I respect Phil. I would just like to get that out there. We have nothing but respect for Phil, and we have a lot of <laughs> appreciation for what he did here. <laughs> All right. Uh, Trick Williams, Blair Davenport won the Iron Survivor Challenge matches. They will get title shots at the uh, on the January second TV special, New Year's Evil. Nikita Lyons is back. Very funny now to look back at some of Punk's tweets about QAnon in WWE uh -huh. or NXT uh -huh. when uh, Nikita Lyons allegedly straight up January sixth. There. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know. <laughs> You had Jericho in the one company. You have her here, <laughs> her and Pillman Jr. You know, you got sure. You got it. It's everywhere. It's pro wrestling. <laughs> These are not brain surgeons. It's true. <laughs> These I, are people that work out for a living, right? Correct. <laughs> they work out and then they fall on their backs for money <laughs> and hit the back of their head all yes. the time. Yeah. It's, it's think it. You were, you shouldn't be surprised. It's no. time to stop being surprised when people in this profession turn out to maybe not be great, great people on a personal level or or have a a problematic view or two of how the world works. Sure. Uh, all right. So that's kind of WWE world stuff we talked about. Should we talk about AEW? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> what uh, what do you think of uh, Dynamite this week? 
Uh, I like the main event uh, between Swerve and Moxley. Don't love that they beat Swerve. Um, I so, most, most sorry, I should have I should have set this up better. There were four Continental Classic matches on the show. Riho wrestled Ruby Soho. Mm -hmm. Hanger wrestled uh, Roddy Strong. Mm -hmm. And there was a a horrific promo segment with the Golden Jets. And Samoa (laughs) Joe also talked and apparently is taking over MJF's role of feuding with half the roster. Uh Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. That that about covers that. So, like, I like. So, here's the thing. I'm just not. For as long as it's been going, it feels like the devil thing should feel more important than it does. And it just doesn't. I don't care who's under the mask. Right. Um, so that's 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 problem A. Problem B, I liked the part where Joe comes out and accuses Hangman of being the guy who laid out MJF, and Hangman comes out and gets in his face and says, you know, them's fighting words, and if you want to do something about it, let's do something about it. Good, simple, it works. Um, and then Roderick Strong came out to do comedy um and it's like that was it was a real peaks and valleys show for me of (laughs) what the best of this company can be and what the worst of this company can be um and there was i think you pointed this out to me there was like there was some bit of even in segments that weren't necessarily designed to be comedic we had to have something some sort of very wacky 2010s WWE style comedy in like every segment on the show somehow. It's difficult to um, or I don't want to be someone that uh, just um, parrots what the uh, internet wrestling fan is saying about the show but it's hard to look at um, the there is a narrative that the sports entertainment of dynamite started when Jimmy Jacobs arrived to mm-hmm. be Tony Khan's new best friend. <laughs> and I mean, Nelson was like, Hey, I'm, I'm having trouble staying up this late. And uh, so he, he recommended Jimmy Jacobs be Tony's best friend instead. Correct. And, uh, and Tony said that was really a wonderful thing and a good idea. And now we travel everywhere together and he's got an apartment right by my house. And uh, all I got to do is text him and he comes over and we write the shows. And uh, then we get on my plane and we write the shows and uh, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's hard not to say that this is Jimmy Jacobs fault when it all lines up so perfectly <laughs> to be Jimmy Jacobs fault. <laughs> I mean, his fault, the the. There's a lot of now ex WWE people in the production side of the show too. Um, as far as like some of those vignettes that they did with with Cole and Roderick and MJF and all that, like there's there is a lot of <laughs> a lot of that. But yes, you can people can point to that uh, and and Jimmy Jacobs. Look at the end of the day, as we have said many times, and we'll continue to say, Tony Khan's the guy is making the decision. Whether someone else is the one with coming up with the idea, right? It's still Tony Khan's fault if the show is bad, because he's the guy who says yes or no to the bad ideas. <laughs> um, but yes, I think it's fair to say that Tony Khan, whether he would ever publicly admit this or not, he is he has two other jobs. <laughs> Uh, you know, he's helps helps run his the, the 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 soccer team and the football team and is also running a wrestling league. I understand wanting to build infrastructure around you so that like when Action Andretti wants to talk to somebody about his push, <laughs> you don't have to talk to him. <laughs> I understand that. I yeah, understand. that's probably necessary. <laughs> yeah, like I understand the idea of like not every wrestler being able to go knock on on Tony's door on the show day to talk to him about creative or whatever. So I understand the idea of building out a team, building out and a guy and guys that have experience doing wrestling television, uh, whether it's WWE or TNA, like it makes sense because you don't have to they don't have to learn how to do the job. They already know how to do the job, but it does mean they're going to do it the way they were they learned to do it, which if it's a very WWE way of doing things, 
and structuring segments and structuring promos, it's going to start to really feel noticeable how, uh, as you said, sports entertainment fied the show has become, especially in its talking segments The you know, the talent and the wrestling matches are still good. And this show, which was largely built around the tournament matches did, you know, held up just fine in the ratings. I think it did a little better than last week. So like people don't seem to hate the shows right now, but as, as a whole of the, the MJF soap opera stuff and now, which is now in enlisted Joe and hangman. And obviously we don't know the status of MJF. They say he's going to wrestle at the pay-per-view, but we also know he's he's pretty beat up, so maybe Hangman's going to be added to that match, and it's going to be a three way, so Max doesn't have to do as much. Who knows? But uh, yeah, that that stuff I didn't really enjoy. I don't. I think some of the Tony timeless Tony Storm stuff is kind of funny, but it's also like she's a very talented professional wrestler, and it it kind of sucks that like what got her over is is 2016 Uh (laughs) uh-huh you know 2016 (laughs) like this is this is like a bit you give to like heath slater (laughs) like like yeah if you're not if you're like of somewhat limited talent in the professional wrestling business absolutely you could be a comedy character and that's that should that should be part of wrestling comedy is a part of wrestling but she's also the world champion and she's a comedy buffoon who turns the screen black and white whenever she appears. Like again, there's stuff to enjoy in it. I don't. Even, I'm not even saying I hate the act. It's just like, oh, this doesn't. It, you you. It would have been nice if someone could have figured out a way to make her like a top a top star. And she is now like the most pushed woman in the promotion, and she's the champion. So there's that. But yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of the uh, promo segments are are not to my. Uh, enjoyment <laughs> and the overarching who done it and who's in the mask uh, doesn't doesn't do a lot for me. But hey, still a lot of good wrestling on it. So um, it's it's a mixed bag. <laughs> yep, Continental Classic. Uh, there's about two weeks left now uh, before the pay per view. So that that's wrapping up. We'll get uh, the finals on December 30th. Uh, it's looking like Moxley on one side, and it's a little more wide open on the other side with Danielson, and I think Andrade is the only unbeaten guy on the other side mm-hmm. at this point. Um, with interesting timing, he's uh, he's headed back to CMLL, and might I don't know his contract apparently is up next summer. Interesting time to be a free agent wrestling if you're Andrade Alidolo and you are once again in the good graces of uh, your wife, Charlotte Flair. <laughs> That's an on again, off again relationship that is there. They've been married for quite a while now, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but uh, I think they're on it again. Seems to be they're they're uh... <laughs> he he vague tweets whenever she's uh, whenever she's on television doing something and tells her she does a good job. So and yeah. he's and he's doing the figure eight in his matches. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that I guess I, I guess Andrade. I don't think they've done Andrade and Moxley. So that's I guess that's an interesting first time matchup. And like, they, haven't, they haven't done Andrade and a lot of people because Andrade doesn't <laughs> like to do jobs. That's, that's fair. <laughs> He came in and he did like the flaming table match with Cody in the first month. And then he just kind of just kind of floated for like a year and a half because him and Miro and whoever else just wouldn't do no jobs. (laughs) He and Miro both. um, And it's funny now because he's marriage managed by Miro's wife. Mm. It took very similar career paths here in AEW where uh, they came in, they got ungodly jacked mm-hmm. it doesn't look all natural <laughs> they refuse to do any jobs uh andrade punched a guy mm-hmm. he got told not to punch a guy he <laughs> punched him anyway like don't do this if you think you're gonna get fired and then he's like you know what still worth it right 
Uh, he's like, uh, well, that was just he, he got to punch a guy a free card. That's mm-hmm. what that was. <laughs> he uh, they both uh, spent some time sitting at home <laughs> getting paid. Mm-hmm. And now here we are. It's fascinating. What a run. Both of those guys. <laughs> yeah, he, at least Miro got like the six month TNT champion. Like he was very happy when he was on TV when they just made him their Brock for <laughs> yeah for six months and he just destroyed everybody. But uh, since then, it's been a uh, few and far between. But hey, uh, I'm sure it'll all work out. But yeah, I don't know the 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 Andrade thing. I thought was interesting because. Really, the only person you should listen to when it t- when it comes to talking about like the inner workings in Mexico, I think, is a uh, Cubs fan or Lucha blog on yeah. Twitter because he's like the only one who actually watches these shows and like is connected <laughs> as far mm-hmm. as Amer- as far as American reporters anyway. Um, and he was like, he's doing this because if he goes back to WWE next year, he's obviously not going to be able to, and it was important to him to go back to CMLL while he still had like a window. Right. So I took that as well. It sounds like there's a pretty good chance that he would at least that he would like to go back to WWE, and I'm sure it would depend on money and and dates and whether or not he and his wife are friends at the moment. But you know, I I it certainly seems like a guy who's like getting his ducks in a row in case he decides he wants to go back uh, next year. Yep. Oh. Uh, well, we should probably talk about um, World's End, what's coming up here. We have uh, the kind of classic finals for that show. We already talked about the world title picture. And now a tag team title match has been added to that show between Ricky Starks and Big Bill. They'll defend against the Golden Jets, the Winnipeg Jets, the Golden Jets, Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega. <laughs> and wow, what a segment they had on on Dynamite this week to uh, to put that match together. Speaking of people that looked like they had CTE on live television, uh, yeah, uh, it. I think in Jericho's head, I would have to imagine that this was like a classic, like him and The Rock talking to Rhino and Booker T on the stage of a SmackDown segment where. They come out and say a few funny lines and they're chummy and then the heels come out and they trade some barbs and, and then they set up their their title match. But what actually happened was, yeah, I don't I think Kenny's too much of a nerd to do drugs. But if you didn't know better, like Kenny, Kenny was forgetting lines left and right, couldn't including his own team name, um, which, to be fair, I'm guessing wasn't his idea. <laughs> yes, uh, but Kenny looked uh uh, just completely uh, uninterested in being there, and well mixed, and just just like, what am I doing? Right. <laughs> just so he looked like he was either trying to make himself laugh, or he was just so uninterested in what he was doing. So they, they go back and forth. They tell a lot of bad jokes, like Brian Gruwitz's cutting room floor material, right? Uh, of uh, of nicknames for Ricky and and Big Bill. And then uh, they finally, at the end, uh, say, oh, yeah, and we're having a match at the pay-per-view. Um, it's like for for a match with like for a segment with like four guys like Kenny's Kenny's a weird dude. And like he's not a traditional. <laughs> he wasn't for a long time a traditional U.S. pro wrestling main event talker. He did, I right. think, do pretty good as the heel world champion. Yes. Um but now he's a baby face in a tag team with an equally stale baby face, Chris Jericho. Yes. And he doesn't, he, he was giving it, I don't blame Ken, I guess is what I would say, because he is probably the least qualified to be in that segment and talk, but of the rest of them, it was just, and I mean, Ricky wasn't terrible in the segment. Bill wasn't terrible in the segment. It's mostly just, it was like when it comes time for Jericho to like beg the crowd to chant, his bad insults. Yes. Uh, it's like, oh, this is just dying to death. And the crowd, that was a very hot crowd they were in front of. I don't I don't think it was a huge crowd, but they were they were into pretty much everything all over that show. And they were into Jericho and Kenny when they came out. And then the longer they talked, the quieter they were, which is generally a sign that whatever you're doing isn't working. <laughs> yes. Beyond beyond flubbed lines or bad jokes, they just the longer it went, the worse it got. <laughs> But 
the match will unfortunately involve Chris Jericho. So it also probably won't be good. Like most of these AEW things you can go at the end, you can go, but the match of the pay-per-view will be good. Uh, Jer- I don't know. Maybe if you're going to try to get something out of Jericho, maybe a tag team is the best thing to do. But I also would say maybe put him in a tag team with someone besides Kenny Omega. <laughs> And give Kenny yeah. something else to do, but that's what we're doing for now. So, uh, Russell Texas final estimate was uh, like 3660 for that show last for the dynamite show this week. Okay, uh, which look, it's much better than any number two company in this country has done in mm-hmm. decades. That should be celebrated. It's sure. not what they were doing two years ago, so. Maybe there's only room for one number one, and that's fine. Yeah, um, maybe trying to do a light version of that number one show isn't isn't helping anyone, right? Yeah, uh, we're talking about the the some of the lines in that Jericho and in Omega mm-hmm. promo segment. Um, it brought to mind when uh, Punk on SmackDown uh, had a line about. <laughs> Uh, you can't go around backstage punching people in the face. Mm-hmm. And it was, as you mentioned to me, it wasn't quite as bad as the um, Eric Bischoff referencing uh, Sid and Arn Anderson, uh, the scissors incident that they had. Yes. He, he Bischoff famously brought that up in a segment one time, got no reaction, thought he like the microphone was dead or something. And that's why he didn't get a reaction. So he repeated it. Again, got no reaction because nobody knew this backstage story. (laughs) It wasn't quite that when Punk said that uh, he he just can't go around punching people backstage. Um, They did cut to a couple people in the audience who knew what it was and were kind of like ooing and eyeing. But the reaction was like, I don't know, 20 percent of the people knew what he was (laughs) talking about, maybe 30 percent. Yeah, maybe I'm being generous. <laughs> yeah, there was like there was a lot of like ah ha ha like right. like the crowd was like oh okay all right like and to be fair it's like this wasn't even reference and people are like well this means just because WWE people don't even know what AEW is it's like well it's not like they talked about it on AEW television either so it's a subset of a subset of people who watched WWE watched AEW and also paid attention to like the the twitter scuttlebutt of right. what exactly happened that led led to punk quitting so it's like it's already a small set plus it's like this charity troops show so it's like yes. there's a lot working again it wasn't the right town to probably break that line out <laughs> the right time or place if you broke that out in the in the uh, you know in not full sale uh the wherever they they tape uh the, the capital center where they tape uh nxt um like that's that would have gotten a giant reaction from like the 300 people who go to nxt every week but um and it probably would have gotten a big reaction at an aew show for, for that matter yes but uh for that crowd on that night uh they mostly either didn't didn't get it or just didn't didn't care so I, I just took it as they didn't get it like i like that's not a that's not a story even though it was the biggest story seemingly to all of us that are in this bubble there is there is once again perhaps an actual casual fan who just watches world wrestling entertainment and goes to the shows and doesn't tweet or care anything about what happens that isn't on the screen <laughs> Very similarly, Chris Jericho was expecting a big pop when he called uh, Ricky Starks and Big Bill Big Billy Starks. Yes. <laughs> and this is maybe doubly embarrassing because Billy Starks is in the main event of the Ring of Honor pay-per-view this weekend, mm-hmm. <laughs> this Friday night that's going head-to-head with SmackDown and Tony's other show. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. It, he is only asking people to pay the price of the streaming service rather than uh show out 40 bucks for pay-per-view by the way it is uh on, on the streaming service but yeah jericho called ricky and bill big billy starks and like paused for the reaction and got none <laughs> right and then begged the fans to chant it and they kind of did for about five seconds yep 
two other things I want to talk about real quick. One, the horse's jumpsuit that Renee uh, Paquette was wearing on Dynamite this week. Uh huh. Fantastic. <laughs> got the, well, she's interviewing the Von Erics. She got a. Yeah. A dress for the occasion. Yep. Love that. And uh, we've covered just about everything else. Uh, talking about Continental Classic stuff. There was a Continental Classic match on on uh, Collision this past weekend. Mm-hmm. It was Brian Danielson and his eye patch against Andrade El Idolo. Mm-hmm. And uh, Danielson did his first job of the tournament. And uh, I came away from it feeling the way I often feel coming away from a Brian Danielson match <laughs> where I was like, uh, I understand what he's doing here, uh, but I find this gross and disgusting, and this is not for me. And you came away from it feeling what? Uh, that he's the best wrestler on on the planet, <laughs> and he rules. <laughs> so, one of the I don't know if you've seen the uh, there's an SNL sketch with uh, what's the the uh, I, uh, one of those meme people. Sarah something or other. Uh uh-huh. Sarah Snicker. No, it's the manager of the Braves. <laughs> uh Sarah's uh sneaker. I don't know. Anyway, it's about uh it's a spoof of the um those one of those cola guard commercials where they're like, eh, we're so you uh you uh you uh you poop in this bag and then you send it through the United States mail. And uh, it goes to this coal guard place, and then we'll tell you with sixty-one percent certainty whether or not you have colon cancer. <laughs> that's that's the bit the coal guard business, right? So then <laughs> they do a spoof of this on, which again, I don't know how it's legal to send that stuff through the mail. I don't know how why you would do it with like sixty-one percent certainty. I, uh-huh. It doesn't seem like very good odds to me <laughs> for all the trouble that you're going to mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of pooping in a box and then taking that box to the post office <laughs> and sending it to the coal guard people <laughs> anyway there's a saturday night live sketch where uh the, the they're like okay so we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna take your sample out of the bag and we're not gonna play around with it <laughs> and then we're gonna run it through the test and we'll tell you without with that with uh certainty whether or not you have colon cancer and they're like, okay, well, why do you make a point of saying that you're not going to mess around with it? And they're like, well, <laughs> because as we said, we're going to take it out of the box. We're not going to mess around with it. And then we're going to run it through the tests and we'll tell you if you got cancer. Anyway, by the end of it, they're saying, fine, we're going to mess around with it. We're going to take your sample out. We're going to play around with it a little bit. And then we'll, and then, then we'll run the tests on it. All right. So anyway. <laughs> So Danielson and Andrade had this match on uh, Collision where uh, Andrade ripped his eye patch off and he's got this scar on his head from where he had surgery to repair his broken orbital bone. Mm-hmm. And Andrade just is like sticking his finger in the scar and messing around with it. <laughs> and there's <laughs> there's blood smeared everywhere. Mm-hmm. And he's just like dig- he's fake biting at the scar and he's sticking his thumbs in the scar Mm -hmm. and he's messing around with it a little bit (laughs) it's just like this is not what i want from pro wrestling (laughs) (laughs) this is danielson pushes buttons that i don't want pushed (laughs) that's fair i i yeah i'm not in a position to argue uh with with your feelings on this (laughs) ultimately uh but to me it's like that's this is why (laughs) He's so caffeinating because whenever he has had a debilitating injury, going back to when he had a detached retina in Ring of Honor, he's like, I'm going to build the entire match around the guy attacking my real injury. <laughs> and he's just a big sicko. <laughs> and and uh, that's what makes him so captivating. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not advocating anyone do what he does. But boy, I I get a real kick out of watching it. Um, and I think in the case of this Andrade one, he wrestled the like they taped Collision on the Tuesday before last week's Dynamite, Correct. and then he wrestled for what ended up being Friday night's Rampage. So even though his match with Garcia aired first, it had happened the night after the Andrade match. So you're like, well, you know he's fine. So 
that was the other reason I was like, yeah, this is just fun. This is just good, clean, sicko fun for uh, for for the real the real freaks like uh, like Brian Danielson and myself. I I can't argue with its effectiveness. <laughs> it's just <laughs> this is not for me. No, I I hear you. <laughs> Like, I think there's a time maybe even five years ago, but I've watched him like when he came back to WWE, like the first thing he would do is like get dumped on his head and then sell like he was concussed. He loved doing that. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> he you know, sure did. he loves I mean, when he came back from his broken arm, like that whole first match with Ricky Starks, the really bloody, violent strap match, which you also hated. <laughs> <laughs> was uh was built around like Ricky working over his arm and like throwing it into the post and and stopping on it and stuff. So it's like, yeah, he's 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 a big sicko and he he's uh he's a guy who believes in well, everyone knows it's real if it you know that I had this real injury. So wouldn't it be fun to uh to build the whole match around it? And you know what? By golly, he's right sometimes. <laughs> For me. Sure. <laughs> And I can also say, wow, he is a master of psychology because he knows how to push buttons that I don't want pushed. Sure. But I don't want those buttons pushed. That's fine. Look, at the end of the day, the entertainment industry is the service industry. And if you're not <laughs> getting a product that you like, that's OK. You don't have to. We we have this thing where we can't just go, especially in wrestling, like where we can't just go. I don't like this. We have to go. <laughs> it's great, objectively. We I hated this match. It it sets the it sets the sport back thirty years, but also five stars. Like you know, uh, I don't. I'm not talking about anyone in particular. No, but, of course not. Uh, but uh, like this thing where we have to pretend there's like an objective way to view professional wrestling or any form of entertainment where we're like well the artistry is superb but i hated every minute of it and i <laughs> wish it i wish the men involved had never been born but it is the greatest match on uh, on u.s <laughs> oil in the last 50 years like, no if you don't like it it's fine <laughs> like, we don't we don't have i'm not i'm not like i'm kind of riffing off of your thing like i right. I, I think what you're saying i'm sure is is in earnest <laughs> but there, there is this always that thought of like we have to spend 36 minutes being like no i get it i get what he's doing <laughs> i understand it's not that i didn't understand it i right. just don't like it <laughs> right but you have to spend 35 minutes explaining that you get it first before you can say you didn't like it <laughs> right i am shouting at the top of my lungs and i'm not mad don't print in the newspaper that i got mad <laughs> i'm not dumb don't put in the newspaper that i'm too dumb to understand what he's doing right <laughs> i understand what he's doing i just don't like it Exactly. All right. Well, all right. we've talked about it quite a bit here. Ring of Honor uh, pay per view. Uh, no one cares. Well, the world title in of that company is tied up in the Continental Classic, so the world champion's not wrestling on this show. Is that correct? <laughs> correct. So it's Athena and Billy Starks in the main event. They're crowning a new TV champion. The AAA Mega Title is on the line. Uh, it's a the TV title's vacant, so it's a six way elimination match to determine the new champion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's El Hio de uh, del Vikingo versus Black Tarus for the uh, AAA mega title, and that was just added the, on in a random throwaway line mm -hmm. on Dynamite. They have uh, Tony Nice versus Ethan Page in an I Quit match. Who could possibly care? <laughs> Ethan Page had a good match with Kenny on uh, on on Collision the uh, the other day, but uh, I I have like a soft spot for Ethan Page for whatever reason. Like I I appreciate his work, but I also understand that like I understand why eighty five people get pushed ahead of him. <laughs> sure, but I do think he's like a really solid, good, good professional wrestler. <laughs> he's an adequate pro wrestler. <laughs> Maybe you think higher of him than I do. Uh, I'm not saying he's not adequate. I don't <laughs> don't, don't put, put him in the newspaper. newspaper that I got now. <laughs> uh, Keith Lee's wrestling Shane Taylor on the show, and then they added uh, Moxley, Claudio, and Danielson against FTR and Mark Briscoe. Well, so, that's if that's if you were gonna watch the show, that's the that's the match to <laughs> that's the match to watch. But unfortunately, no one has a subscription to Honor Club, so uh, no one will see the show. We, and we called NBC and they said we've never heard of Carson Daly <laughs> alrighty 
Well, uh, that's all I got. You got anything else? No, I think that, uh, that about wraps it up. All right. Well, until next time, everyone, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Do you have any you have any Roku devices in your house? Yeah. Okay. So you know how they always put ads on like the thing when you turn it on? Uh you talking about like the like screensaver or yeah, the... Like the banner ads or like yeah, if you have the screensaver comes on, they'll show you like things that are on various correct streaming platforms. Yeah, like we see Fox the... Nation or right. uh I get a lot of uh uh Spanish language anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, so there's one that's on the the Roku channel for a Demi Lovato Christmas special. I've I've seen that ad. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I was like, "What is this? And why <laughs> is it on the free Roku channel that right. I've never once looked at right. in the entire time that I've had a Roku device, which is probably like five years." Right. And I was like, "Is this like an old thing that they bought? Was this like a YouTube special or something?" No, it's new. It's from this year. And it's like, so I was like, well, I have to watch like the first five minutes of this now and just see what it is. And let me tell you, if you'd like to see what appears to be Demi Lovato in a hostage situation (laughs) on the smallest like little sound (laughs) stage that's like white and red and it's like her and a couple of musicians and she sings a song and then she very clearly is reading off a cue card for like her opening monologue. <laughs> okay. She's like, what is what what? And you might be asking, what makes this a very demi Christmas? And then she goes into like the most generic spiel about like, you know, it could be hard to get home for the holidays with work or anyway. And then she just like it's just like these really like generic platitudes about like it's about good food and being with people or she's like the humans or non-humans and there's like a pause where i assume they're like they're waiting for laughter uh and then and then she (laughs) finishes it and then it's like of course there's ads so it's like coming up later in the special which is where i tapped out It's, it's like there's a cooking segment there's her singing another song and then it cuts to like sell what appears to be like a Zoom call captured on on somebody's cell phone of Justin Bieber's wife, and she's like, "Hi, uh, Demi sent me a Christmas present that I'm going to open right now." And I was like, "This is the bleakest thing I've ever <laughs> seen. No one looks like they want to be here, including the person whose special it is. <laughs> what is happening? What like?" If you're the Roku channel, I assume the Roku channel just has infinite money and you got to put it somewhere. Right. Because every device in America has a Roku attachment now. Sure. Like, so you just got to You got to launder it somehow. So you just like, we'll we'll produce our own shows on our channel that nobody watches. Exactly. Um, Oh, I assume it's a money laundering scheme, but I was like, I, this, if I put this, if I were in a tough place, as many are around the holidays, yeah, I put this on trying to make myself feel it would make me feel so much worse <laughs> because you could just tell like often happens around the holidays. This is like the most forced, stilted, uncomfortable, unnatural thing <laughs> you've ever seen. And I was like, and it's like 55 minutes long. And I'm like, <laughs> yikes, this is gonna like you. T- <laughs> I just, I just, I don't, I don't understand why it was made or like what the target audience of it is. Cause surely if you like Demi Lovato, like you, you just follow her on Instagram and like listen to her songs. Like, right. <laughs> that's probably, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's for the, the dip, but it's, I don't know. It's just like, but it's her standing in like a, like a fifties, like cocktail dress singing public domain Christmas songs. And I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> All of this is fascinating. I want I want an ESPN 30 for 30 about how this got made and how much everyone involved was paid and why she looked so unhappy to be there. <laughs>
That sounds amazing. Uh, sounds that's amazing. what I gleaned from watching two and a half minutes of the de- a very demi Christmas on the free Roku channel. Nice. Uh, my uh i i only had one thought seeing the seeing the ad for it and that was huh i guess she's back to being a girl now huh <laughs> i believe she did make that announcement at some point okay she moved back from from they to she at some point okay i uh i hadn't been keeping up <laughs> i don't know you, I... you think the roku people had to have a conversation with her <laughs> probably <laughs> Like, look, a lot of Japanese we need, businessmen. We need, we need you an address. <laughs> we need you an address and the <laughs> thickest, reddest lipstick anyone has ever worn. Right. Maybe that's why she was so unhappy. Maybe. <laughs> uh. Uh. Um, just a brief, uh, uh, comment on uh, coffee tumblers. Mm-hmm. Most of them are exactly sixteen. Hold exactly sixteen ounces of liquid, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is uh, two cups of coffee. If you don't put cream in it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, I put cream in my coffee, I don't put sugar in my coffee. I put cream in my coffee, mm-hmm. and so I have to make one eight ounce cup in the Keurig <laughs> and one six ounce cup. <laughs> Drives me insane. Can we make a 17.5 ounce tumbler or something so I can put cream in my coffee? Thank you. I, I think that's a, that's a winning idea. I should put on put that on Shark Tank. The, they do exist because I have like one or two tumblers that are 20 ounces or whatever. So you're not alone. At the very, it's like somebody noticed. Yes. That this is a problem. Exactly. Yes. You still take your coffee like a divorced dad in the 1960s? <laughs> right. Yeah. So the, a, a private detective. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, in, in the 1960s. Yes. Uh, just just black. Uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the bitterness is the point. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's what uh, that's what that's why you drink coffee. I do occasionally <laughs> allow myself to have like a Starbucks frozen thing, but that's like a milkshake. Like that's that's a that's a dessert treat for me. That's not a that's not right. a, like it's not a real coffee. Uh, <laughs> real real coffee is uh, in a cup and it's black and it makes you a little bit sad. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it, that's the point. It's a little bit like a warm hug, but also there is bitterness. <laughs> There's a reminder that the end is coming. <laughs> And there's only you have about seven minutes to really enjoy that cup when it's like the perfect temperature. Yes. Especially for black coffee, I found. And then it, like there's a little bit where it's still OK, where it's just kind of warm and then yes. it gets cold and it's the least uh, the least enjoyable drink you've ever had. <laughs> yes. But uh, there's there's that ma- the the five or six minutes, which I refer to as the magic hour <laughs> of, uh, of when uh, your black coffee is at the perfect temperature. It is uh, it is special. It's <laughs> it's me doing the, the Vince McMahon meme of tearing up because right. it's so special. All right. I like doing a bit where I refer to a very short amount of time as the magic hour. I think that's good. <laughs> I think that's good shtick. <laughs> yep. No argument. That's uh, that's that's the good stuff. I try to keep on keeping on.